In the book of James, in the New Testament, it speaks about heavenly wisdom versus earthly wisdom. Now you can look it up for yourself. I'm going very rapidly explain the difference between wisdom from above and wisdom that's devilish, that's earthly. Wisdom is not information. And information is not knowledge. Information is just data. For example, how late the train is coming or at which degree water begins to boil. Those are facts. Those, that's data. That's information. And, it, and that information will inform you to such that you will become aware of something. Knowledge has to do with experience of how something operates. You can have knowledge of cars. So not only do you know the types of cars, you know how cars operate. So if a car breaks down, you have knowledge of cars in order to know what to do to get a car running again. And then you have wisdom. And wisdom is really the, how I say, the long term approach, the long term vision. You can get data, but you need to check the data, right? Because you can have data, but without the context and your conclusions will be wrong. Or you may have knowledge, but the knowledge, maybe the knowledge is good, maybe the knowledge is practical and valuable, but you still need to understand when to apply the knowledge and when not. And that, 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 that's where wisdom comes in. Wisdom is simply having a long-term view of how things will work out in the long run. Now, in the world, you have people, we call them experts, who have wisdom about certain fields. Not wisdom according to scripture, not wisdom according to the gospel, but wisdom according to the world. For example, you can have economic prof professors in economics that understand that if you uh, import a lot of migrants that are highly educated, you, that you will contribute to your economy. And they can put out examples throughout history how this has worked out. So, and they also know more about economics. So when people want to know upon which party they can vote, they're going to listen to the experts in economics and they're going to value their opinion concerning how, concerning which party they should vote because the parties will all have economic, um, how do I say, economic influence once they are governing. So the people want to know what they will be empowering. And you can't blame them that they go to listen to experts. You can have a medical expert. For example, you have pain in your stomach. You can have information about it. You can even have knowledge about the body. But the medical expert has experience and he has a long-term vision. So you may take some pills to get rid of the, the pain. But the medical professional will tell you, go to a scan to see what's going on. Because the medical expert may think that it could be a tumor or something. And what do you know? You go for a scan and indeed there is a tumor in there. You see what I'm saying? So in the world, you have, you have wisdom in the sense that you have people with a long-term vision. But scripture may explain that the world's wisdom is devilish. Now, why is it devilish? Because it's not centered around Christ. Because it's not centered around Christ and it doesn't seek to conform to Christ himself, that's why demons are able to use this wisdom to lead people astray. And worldly wisdom, even though it, is, it looks to the long term, most of the time when it comes to implementation, it's to get short-term fixes. Rarely will you find people with worldly wisdom that are interested in long-term solutions. Because worldly people with worldly wisdom 
they know very well that 95% or even more of the population is not interested in long-term solutions, that they only want short-term fixes. They know that when they begin to explain why things cannot be fixed quickly, that most people will back off, that most people will, will stop listening. So people with worldly wisdom, in order to keep people listening to them, they tend to use tactics to, uh, to attract people, but in doing so, they're becoming manipulative in a negative sense. If they would use certain trigger words to get people to listen to them, and then they would, they would administer to people deeply, it would be different. But most people with worldly wisdom, they know that worldly people don't are not really interested in long-term solutions. They want short-term fixes. And that's what is, that is what makes worldly wisdom dangerous. A short example, you may be not familiar, but you may know this, the 1930s in Germany, or the country Germany didn't exist yet, he had the German Reich, the Ger Deutsche Reich, the German Empire under the Nazi uh, party. What happened? This man, Hitler, he knew that people want validation. And he also knew that having a common enemy motivates people, brings people together, and that generates a common bond between people because they have the same enemy. He knew all of this. He had worldly wisdom. And he used that worldly wisdom for his party to boost the economy of Germany. And because he had worldly wisdom, he had knowledge, he and his party gave jobs to the Germans. They had, they had a reformation in the school system. They've implemented sports. They even implemented a kind of healthcare system. The social security number has its origin. The present day social security um, system has its origin in Nazi Germany. So they brought, so the Nazis, they had great, they had knowledge. You can't deny that. But here's, here's a trap. They knew that all those ancient manifestations would not solve the, the dissatisfaction and the negative waste that's among the population. They knew that if they would address this issue, that people needed to change their way of thinking, that they, need, they needed to repent, that most people wouldn't want to do it. By the way, you had believers preaching the gospel back then, and a lot of Germans just didn't repent. And those Nazis, they were not, they were not following Christ. So they would, of course, they wouldn't tell people to repent, because they're not, they're not following Christ. So they know that people don't want to submit to Christ, and they want something else. They want a strong man upon them, so the Nazis gave them a strong man, that's Hitler. And they, they got a target for their collective rage. And the, and the relief of, their, of that rage did have a boosting impact, a, a healing effect on the people. It didn't bring healing, but it had a healing effect. It brought a kind of unity in the, in the, in the Deutsches Reich that people were longing for. It was worldly wisdom, but it was devilish. Why? Because demons used the Nazis to, to perform one big murderous paranormal operation that killed millions of people. Millions. So understand that worldly wisdom will contribute to quick manifestations. And those quick manifestations don't have to be evil things. They don't have to be things that are wrong. It can be good things that manifest quickly when you use worldly wisdom. But understand, quick manifestations tend to trap you. To quick manifestations, or I'm saying the quick delivery, often tends to blind you and keep you trapped without you being aware of it. And once you are trapped and you're not even aware that you're trapped, demons can now use you 
for their agenda without you being aware of it. Worldly wisdom is, is different from heavenly wisdom in the sense that in, let me say like this, in worldly wisdom, it all comes down to self-validation. While in heavenly wisdom, it's all about the glory of Christ himself. And the glory of Christ himself will from time to time require that you suffer for his name's sake, that you will go through trials and tribulations. But here's, here, here's the catch. I'm talking to believers now. It happens that believers are not willing to endure um, tribulation and discomfort for Christ's name's sake. So when the tribulation and persecution arrive, they think that they've done something wrong. They think they're into some kind of sin. And what happens? They are not aware that the discomfort and the troubles they are going through now are part of God's plan for them. They become offended because the Lord is permitting certain things to happen that in, that in their eyes shouldn't have to happen. So they begin to look for answers, look for answers. And when they're looking for answers, they're still faced with the discomforts. And because they're not operating in dissatisfaction and not operating by faith, they're not operating in confidence in Christ's character, in Christ's word. Because of that, now Satan has an open door in their thinking to influence them. So what's going to happen? Satan is going to bring people into their lives or into their environments to death relief. And the believer then sees those people, they have relief, and they begin to think, whoa, those people have understanding. They have knowledge. I should listen to them. And indeed, when, you, when the believer listens to them, he learns. So he thinks, whoa, those people are a blessing. God brought them on my path to help me. So, okay, let me give a very tiny illustration. Let's say that you have difficulty um, with the people around you because people around you tend to treat you a bit poorly. Now, you are obeying Christ, you're agreeing with Christ, and you're not treating people harshly, you're, you're kind, you are respectful. So you're asking, Lord, why is this happening? You are not aware that those people have their own corrupt way of thinking, that they have their own waste energies with them, and it's those waste energies that they are acting out. And because you are different from them in your attitude, they perceive you as a threat. So they are persecuting you because you're operating in righteousness, but you're the one thinking that there must be something I'm doing wrong. You're, you're, you're still not delivered from self-centeredness. So now someone comes by and that someone, um, uh, he's very, he or she is very straight and he or she deals with people directly, puts people in their place and things stop. Another individual tells you, you don't need to take things from people. You, shut, you just have to open your mouth and put people in their place. So you listen to them and you think, okay, and you do it a few times and it works. It works and get relief and people will begin to treat you better. But hold on a minute. Hold on now. You now feel validated in acting out when things don't go your way. That's what you're now validated into. And this validation is like a sugar doll. You feel so relieved. You're so you become you become and because it has worked and you and you enjoy this relief so much, you're going to hold on to it. You're going to hold on to the understanding you've received of how to deal with things. And that's where the danger is. Because now you're relying on your own understanding instead of relying upon Christ. Now you want to learn more of how people should treat you, how people should not treat you. So now you have people now you have people telling you how to identify a narcissist. And you take notes, you are you learn eagerly all the traits of narcissists. So all the people you encounter, you you're scanned through those um, criteria. And everyone that matches two or more of those criteria, you cut them off. 
or you're very plain onto them that you don't want to deal with them. And it all works, but here's the catch. You are now being drawn into darkness. You know why? Because those criteria of how to identify narcissists, they were not right. They were given by narcissists to deceive you. But because things were working, you thought, well, this is good information. And interesting, those people you've cut off, they were not narcissists. They didn't intend to harm you. You were just so wrapped up in yourself that anything that triggered some discomfort, emo comfort feeling inside of you, you perceived as a threat. Instead of evaluating yourself, evaluating yourself to see whether your thinking patterns are straight, you relied upon your own understanding and acted out to make things work. So now you've become hostile towards others. And by doing that, you're now operating in darkness without you being aware of it. You have been deceived. What has happened? You're now operating in worldly wisdom. And worldly wisdom works. But not, but it's not good for you in the long run. Those people that were treating you poorly, if you would have continued in Christ, if you kept, kept, uh, kept on praying, sooner or later, they will just walk away from you because the demons inside of them would become so uncomfortable of Christ's character that was being formed inside of you. Because indeed, those people didn't treat you well. They were wrong, absolutely. There's no excuse and no reason for it. You shouldn't justify it and neither should you take it. Nevertheless, the Lord was using that circumstance to Perhaps he was using that circumstance to shape you more into the image of Christ. He was shaping you to not repay evil with evil, but to overcome evil with good. He was shaping you to look at the big picture and not only at your own feelings. He was using that circumstance. He did not, the Lord did not agree with the circumstance, neither did the circumstance come from the Lord, but the Lord was using it to, to break down self-centeredness in your thinking. It was being used to deliver you. But because you lacked understanding, you didn't realize this. You, because you still had that self-centered way of thinking, you thought, there must be something wrong I'm doing. it, uh, and, and there were things you were doing that were wrong. The number one thing is you were centered around self. You didn't rely, rely completely on Christ. You kept perceiving everything around you as if it's, you, it's caused by you. So if someone would not greet you back when you greeted them, you think, oh, I must, it must, what did I do wrong? That's what the Lord was breaking down in you so that his, so the fruits of the spirit would manifest through you. But because you now began to operate in, I would say you began to operate in offense because you were upset or let me say offended because things kept on happening. You didn't get to rely upon the Lord but you wanted to have wisdom and understanding, and there's nothing wrong with wisdom and understanding. But devils, I'm saying, Satan has you and his devils have used this opportunity to trap you into darkness, to lead you astray, and to use you to lead others astray. So look, there's nothing wrong with information. There's nothing wrong with data or with knowledge. Okay, but when it comes to wisdom. Test whether or not the wisdom you're, you claim you have is not darkness. Because even if it's valuable information, even if the wisdom uses the Bible as a reference, that doesn't mean it's in, in agreement with Christ. Or it may be in agreement with Christ, but only in a certain context. Test all things. And again, I do not expect you to agree with me. I expect you to agree with Christ, to agree with the Messiah. So you test all things and you retain the good. That means you also test this video you've just listened to. I really do not expect you to agree with me. Neither do I care whether you like this video or not. I do hope and expect you to agree with Christ himself. That being said, okay, okay one thing more. In the New Testament, it's also written that Jesus has become our wisdom. So wisdom for the believer is the relationship with Christ. That being said, be at peace.